Now, if you squint your eyes really, really tight, you might be able to make out a Yamaha XSR 700 from this motorcycle, or maybe even a Honda CB500X or something like that. But this is actually a Benelli Leoncino 500. Yes, this is a motorcycle you would not normally see out on your local streets here in America, but Benelli is a really well-known brand over in Europe. And we are now finally getting the chance to enjoy some Benelli motorcycles here in America. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Yammy Noob. Today, we are taking a look at the little lion, the Benelli Leoncino 500. We're gonna find out if it's a good beginner bike, what's going on with this motorcycle, and is the quality finally up to the task of the other beginner bikes in the category. Let's find out. All right, folks, so a brief overview on Benelli, the brand, and why we have this motorcycle. We actually got this bike as a loaner from Benelli Corporate themselves. Benelli here in North America, we got a contact over there. They were like, hey, why don't you take a Leoncino as a loaner bike for a little bit, see what it's all about, and uh, that is why we have this bike. So thanks again to Benelli for giving us this bike for some videos. We're gonna have some fun with this motorcycle. And uh, this bike in particular is the trail version of the Leoncino 500. So that means you can tell it's got the wire-spoked wheels, the 19 18 inch front end and the kind of 90-10 scramblery tires. These are the same tires that the uh, Triumph Street Scrambler actually comes with. So this thing actually has quite a bit going for it, which is pretty cool. So today we're gonna take a look at the specifications of this machine, the ergonomics of it. We're gonna take it out for a ride and we're gonna see what it's all about and see if it makes sense as a great beginner motorcycle. So top line figure for this bike is it costs $61,999 in the standard trim and it's gonna cost $64,000 $499 in this trail trim for the MSRP. Now, let's take a closer look at the styling and some of the features of this motorcycle. Alrighty folks, talking through the specs on the Benelli Leoncino 500 Trail Edition here. Uh, but before we talk specs, let's take a look at the styling of this bike. This is a really handsome looking bike, man. I think it looks really unique. Um, I love the look of the frame on this thing. It's got a tubular frame and a swing arm as well, which is kind of cool. You can see that over there. Um, so pretty unique look. Yes, it does kind of look like an XSR 700, but that's because an XSR 700 is kind of like just a standard old school looking bike. The headlight on this motorcycle actually looks really unique. And look at that tiny little lion ornament on the front. Easily the coolest feature on this bike. Who does a hood ornament? on a motorcycle nowadays, uh, literally no one. So we'll start from the front of the bike and move towards the back of the bike. As we mentioned, this is the trail version of the of the uh, Leoncino 500. So it has the 19 inch front end with these Metzler's Torrance 9010 uh, off-road tires here. Not the most knobby things in the world, right? But plenty to tackle a little fire road and have some fun. Um, you can tell the braking setup on the Benelli, not the most hot shot braking system ever. Um, we're gonna get it out on the road and see how that feels, but uh, I'll tell you guys right now, it is not the most powerful or best brakes I've ever felt, not gonna lie. Uh, the Benelli features an absolutely gargantuan uh, 50 millimeter front fork setup with rebound adjustability. Yes, these are 50 millimeter forks on this bad boy. Um, they look like they are ready for absolutely anything. They are super beefy. Uh, I don't even have forks that wide on my off-road bikes. Um, I'm not sure why Benelli fitted such beefy, beefy, beefy forks on this machine. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the engine, the star of the show here. This 499cc parallel twin motor uh, measured making 38 horsepower at 8,900 RPM and 29 foot-pounds of torque at 4,500 RPM. And that's measured at the wheel per an article uh, by Nick DeSena that I actually uh, read online. I actually know Nick in real life. Shout out to him for the wonderful write-up on the Benelli that you did. Um, Benelli claims about 47 horsepower out of this bad boy. Uh, very A2 compliant level of power. That's definitely why they did that. Um, but measured wheel horsepower is always gonna be about, you know, 10 to 15% less than what people are quoting for their crank power figures. Um, as we'll tell on the road, this is definitely a torque first kind of engine and uh, you can definitely feel that as well. It's basically like a CBR 500R levels of power. Uh, in ready to ride trim, fully wet and fueled, this thing's gonna come in tipping the scales at about 460 pounds. So about 50 pounds heavier than an MT-07, an XSR 700, and you certainly feel it moving around the shop here a little bit as well. Um, 
The, uh, as I mentioned, the swing arm over here, let's take a look at the tubular swing arm, kind of a unique feature on this bike. As you can tell, looking through the bike here, it's got a great look to it, man, and the uh, steel tubular frame and the tubular swing arm as well. It's pretty unique. Uh, definitely gives it that kind of Italian flair. As you can tell here, a little Leoncino badge as well. It's a really well put together bike. Uh, it's definitely more put together than I thought it would be, honestly. Um, this is definitely a motorcycle that uh, whenever we first were kind of talking to Benelli and being like, oh yeah, we're gonna get the Leoncino 500 sent over, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know about this thing really, but um, I gotta say I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, one thing about this bike too that's kind of cool is the key actually is like a, just like a big blade style key, which is interesting, like an old Volkswagen or a Mazda 3 or something like that. Put the key in here, it's a very simple dash, but you don't need anything else really. Got the blinker going, let's put that away. Gear indicator, RPM, speed, gas, clock, temperature, that's it. What, what, what else do you need? And I was saying before, the unique headline design, very nice there. It's an attractive looking motorcycle, man, I gotta say. Um, I think anyone that would buy this thing would probably be very proud to own it. It looks cool, it looks like a cool motorcycle. It doesn't look like something chintzy or kind of weird. Um, honestly, people really like the look of these bikes, man. That's why the modern, you know, classic thing is really doing very well. Um, one thing I wanted to note as well, and we're gonna get it out on the road and talk about it too, is the exhaust on this bike. It sounds really kind of different than a normal parallel twin. It's got a, an interesting character to the sound uh, on this parallel twin. It definitely doesn't have the super traditional lawnmower-esque parallel twin sound that you'd find in a Ninja 650 or something like that. Nice touch over here you can see is the coil for the spring blends in through the plastic right here. That's really nice. Uh, you've got remote adjustability here for rebound, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, this is overall like a pretty feature rich motorcycle for the price point. Uh, I'm gonna now swing a leg over this thing, tell you guys how it seats and the ergonomics, and then we are gonna go and take it for a ride. Let's do it. All right, folks, swinging a leg over here on the Leoncino 500 Trail. First thing you notice about this bike is uh, how similar it is to Ducati Scrambler. Um, this is actually a really, really similar seating position to a Ducati Scrambler. Uh, the bars are really nice and wide. You get a really uh, confident feeling when uh, you're on this motorcycle. Really nice wide bars. Uh, the peg position is really, really chill. This isn't a bike where you're all super scrunched up or anything like that. And the gas tank shape is actually kind of this peculiar bubble shape. Um, very old school. There's cutouts in the tank or anything like that for you to get a proper sport bike position or anything like that. That's not what this bike is about. This is about a motorcycle to be used for commuting, for uh, going to school, going to work, going to your favorite coffee shops, those sort of things, and to just have a nice time doing it. Uh, this is a very nice place to sit. Your back is nice and straight. You're not even leaned over a little bit on it. Uh, you could potentially get a nice little attack position if you wanted to, but that's not exactly what this bike is about. Since this bike is the trail version, this bike is actually more about standing up on it. So whenever you stand on this bike, try to drop your heels a little bit. You notice that the exhaust actually gets in the way a little bit right there. So it's not perfect, but uh, the any position's pretty good. You could actually tackle a little fire road on this thing. You just gotta lean forward a little bit and uh, you'll be able to uh, get in that mode, kind of bop around the thing, tackle some trails, have some fun with it. Definitely something you could do with this motorcycle. The seat is actually very comfortable. It's got this little shelf on it right here, which is uh, a lot of fun for doing little first gear wheelies, which this thing actually really loves to do. Uh, with all that being said, let's get this thing out and see how it rides. Alrighty folks, taking the Leoncino 500 trail out here, the sweet little Benelli for its first ride. Let's get a quick sound check of this thing. You guys know all the specs and everything. Let's listen to it. Firing up that 499cc parallel twin. Makes a pretty good sound. You know, it's, I mean, it's a parallel twin, so it's not the greatest thing in the world. But for some reason, this bike has a little bit of panache and energy around it. If you notice the way it idles, listen. Just kind of elicits a little something different, you know? Slow speeds, 
this bike is phenomenal. Um, for an entry level rider, this is exactly the type of layout that you want. It's very easy to manipulate in slow speeds. Rear brake is really, really dialed in. You can just do really nice little circles with this thing. No problem at all. You can bang it around any which way you need to. Really, really nice to ride in the slow speeds, um, which is exactly what you're looking for if you're looking at this as an entry level motorcycle, which is how Benelli has positioned it. Um, the throttle feel on this bike is actually pretty decent. From a standstill here, we're going downhill a little bit. Um, you guys will notice that I can, I can kind of just let out the clutch and it'll just go. Uh, so it's actually pretty difficult to stall, but uh, you know, otherwise the, the Benelli here actually feels pretty damn good out of the clutch and through the throttle and everything. It's got a pretty good neutral throttle feel. And um, it's because it's got a cable throttle, man. I really think that the cable throttle just, it's a solved problem. It's a mouse trap when it comes to motorcycle throttle feel. It's a great little package right there. Now, flipping the Benelli over here, making sure that this Toyota Camry doesn't go right in front of me. Thank you, sir. Uh, you will notice that the Benelli can float little front gear, first gear wheelies uh, all day. It's a ton of fun to ride this thing. Um, I was actually really surprised at how you can just do little wheelies with it and have a ton of fun. Now, 499cc parallel twin, uh, that's not going to be a prodigious amount of power by any stretch of the imagination. It's about 48 horsepower, about 38 of those ponies are making it to the ground measured. But this bike has a fun little trick up its sleeve in that it actually is a much more torque first kind of engine. You don't really want to rev the thing out very much because um, it just doesn't have a whole lot in the way of top end power. I think we're clear to go here. We'll ring out a couple gears here. Limiter comes in pretty aggressively. Uh, I think right around 9,000 RPM. It's just gonna chop power really, really aggressively on you. And that's because I don't really think this engine is really designed to be abused in the way that a Ninja 400 or an R3 uh, is. I'm not to say that, you know, the, the bikes they're making over Benelli are unreliable, but I would rather uh, ring a Japanese motorcycle out to Redline constantly than an Italian one, let's put it that way. An Italian one owned by a Chinese company. However, this motorcycle is still made in Italy. So this is, you, you know, if you bought this motorcycle as your inch bike, you could say, ah, I've got a Benelli Lianchino. It's an Italian motorcycle. And to the average everyday normie, they may be like, wow, that sounds really cool. What a, what a cool bike you've got. <laughs> Um, one thing to note here is that it's a beautiful day here in Austin, Texas, about 72 degrees, spring day here, so any bike you're riding in these kind of conditions is going to be a blast. Now, this is the trail edition of this motorcycle, and one thing I want to check on it is uh, the trail capabilities, right? So we'll check it down, our little scrambly bit here that we normally take our bikes. Hook it up in a second. Managing the bump decently well. <laughs> um, not not the best bump manager I've ever seen, honestly. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think you have to temper your expectations with the Benelli as a trail motorcycle. Let's see how it does on this stuff. Oof! <laughs> I hit the pump stops on the front. <laughs> that was a crunch if I ever felt it. Uh, one cool thing about this bike is because it's kind of entry level, you know, um, it doesn't really have any traction control or anything like that. So uh, you can have a fun time with this thing. <laughs> Slipping and sliding the rear a little bit, but it certainly is a street bike. Um, I would not take this down any single track or anything like that. But if you found yourself on a little gravel road, maybe a, a rocky kind of back road like this one that we're on right now, kind of making it back to um, where we started, I think it'd do just fine, you know? I think you could definitely take it down these kind of things and it'll do fine. The throttle response, however, off-road, because we're getting a lot of feedback from the front, uh, <laughs> like a lot, way more than I'd prefer. Uh, and that might be the fact that it just might need the rebound adjustability 
uh, sort it out a little bit. Maybe you just got to tweak the rebound a little bit at the front and it'll handle off-road a little bit better. But, you know, at 460 pounds and, you know, kind of street set up basically, except for the 19, uh, it's not the most confidence-inspiring thing in the world off-road. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not super convinced as to what this thing could do exactly off-road, but, uh, you know, any road that a Jixxer 250 will go down, this bike will happily trundle down as well. Not the fastest thing in the world, 0-60, to 60, as you can tell here. It's taken a little bit of time to get up to speed, but the Benelli's got a lot going for it, man. It's a handsome motorcycle from the cockpit here. We're just sitting, cruising on it. Um, I do feel like I'm on a Ducati Scrambler meets a desert sled meets a XSR 700 type of motorcycle. Um, it's a kind of fun blend of everything, uh, which makes it kind of a great bike for a kind of do anything, primarily street oriented motorcycle. Um, I think that uh, does pretty good. Now, the one area I have to fault the Benelli on a little bit is the front brake. I don't know if it's just this particular Benelli that we got and if they just need the pads to be rebed or we need new pads on it, but um, this is one of the worst front brakes I have felt in a minute. Um, it's a dual disc setup, so it shouldn't be that bad, but the, the initial bite and the feel to the lever, ugh, it's not working for me at all, at all, at all. Um, it's really not. There's basically no initial bite whenever you get on the brakes. Um, and then you have to really crank on the lever to get some stopping power. And when you do finally get the stopping power, you're kind of like, oh, I guess that's that's it. That's all the stopping power I get. Okay, interesting. So yeah, front brake, not the best. Um, but cruising along here on the highway, click it up into sixth, 75 miles an hour, a little under 6,000 RPM. This thing will probably return pretty great fuel economy. Uh, that's something that I'm sure a lot of you are interested in nowadays and the environment that we're in with gasoline prices rising every day, it seems. Um, so this thing is definitely gonna be a fuel sipper if that's what you're looking for. And what a handsome little fuel sipper it is. Um, I will say the 50 millimeter forks are, are comically large. Uh, I, I know that not many people will even notice that. Even motorcyclists may not really pay attention to the size of the forks on the Benelli, but um, I, I do feel like they are comically large. But this is a fun little bike, man. The formula is here, you know, kind of motardy, upright, big wide bars. Uh, you can definitely have quite a bit of fun with this motorcycle. It's uh, a bike that kind of rewards just gentle cruising, bopping around, little wheelies here and there. Uh, it's, it's kind of fun. It reminds me a lot of the Ducati Scrambler, honestly. Uh, it's like a more street-oriented version of my desert sled. And it's weird, because if you look on paper, this is kind of really similar to a desert sled. It's got 19-inch front wheel, wire-spoked wheels, trail-oriented tires, big, beefy front suspension. Oh, man. <laughs> so this section here, I like taking our bikes to test on, because this is a particularly bumpy section of tarmac. That's not the best thing in the world, but, uh, yeah. It's just like there's a general lack of sophistication in some of the controls on this thing. Um, I just feel like there's a lot of situations where you would want a little, something a little bit more fine, a little bit more controlled. Like, I keep comparing it to the Ducati Scrambler, especially the Desert Sled. You know, it weighs 460 pounds. That bike weighs 450 or so. But that bike's got an 803cc engine. It's got really nice front forks on it that handle bumps really, really well. Um, so this bike is just, it's lacking a little bit, but it's for a budget price, man. Like, you know, only costs like 6,400 bucks. That's really not that bad for the bike you're getting. Over speed bumps, it's completely good. Uh, we'll try to enter this one at Mach Jesus. 40 mile per hour speed bump check. Kind of just hops right over it. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And this engine actually has a very unique flavor and style about it. Um, I really like it. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they get upset at me because I hate the Honda CBR500R. Um, 
and they would say, oh, Yami, this is the exact same engine. Why are you not absolutely dunking on this engine? Well, I don't know. It feels different to me. You know, I've ridden both bikes. Um, I can't really tell you one way or the other why one feels better than the other. You know, I can't be like, oh, it's because of this configuration and this case and blah, blah, blah. Um, all I know is from the seat of the pants here, from the saddle, this, uh, this little Benelli 500 is a fine little parallel twin, if I do say so myself. It is not as fun as Ninja 400. It's not as zippy as an R3. An R3 red lines at 13,500 RPM. It's a ton of fun to ring that thing out to its red line. This is a very different torque first kind of uh, 500. And again, the specs on paper, basically the same as the CBR 500R, but I don't know. It just feels a little bit more complete to me, a little bit more characterful, and it makes a more interesting sound. It's not a great sound. I'm not gonna lie. It's not like I'm sitting here being like, oh my God, this is the greatest engine ever. I wanna own one but uh, it's definitely better than a CBR 500R. Now, taking it through some gentle twisties here, we'll see how this 19 inch front end handles uh, these, these mean twisties with four cars in front of me. So we're gonna run at a super fast pace on the Pedelli Leoncino 500 Trail. <laughs> it's gonna be extreme. I will say the, the 500 here, it's very composed. I think that's the praise I can give it is that it's a very composed motorcycle. On the side of the tire, back and forth, it doesn't feel out of sorts. Uh, that's definitely due to the fact that it's a little bit more hefty than other motorcycles in this category. Uh, like I said, an XSR 700, not exactly a direct competitor. You're getting way more engine and a bigger price tag on the XSR 700. Um, but that bike is, I, this handles better than an XSR 700. It's not a huge bar to clear, but it does handle better. It's not as peppy or interesting or fun to ride as that bike, but it does handle better, which is a great selling point for the Benelli. Um, overall, I think this is a bike that is pretty cool. Like this is a solid seven and a half out of 10 motorcycle for me and a very interesting entrant into the beginner bike category. But yeah, I, I really like the wide swept bars. The only thing is the front brake feel is really atrocious. I'd like to see if I could fix it. Um, I have to remind myself this is a loaner bike and not a giveaway bike, but it'd be interesting to see if I could fix the front brake feel on this thing, because it's just not great. Like the initial bite is really bad, and then the stopping power is not great either. And again, these aren't amazing uh, calipers, so you can't really expect much, but I do expect a little bit better braking performance out of this motorcycle. But then again, it's a 500cc. Oh, is that a Prowler? Oh my God, you never see those things. That's crazy. Um, and again, you know, it's a 500cc motorcycle. Do you, do you really need front brakes? <laughs> I mean, eh, it's debatable, right? Like, do you really need front brakes on this thing? Um, not so much, but it is nice to be able to stop if you have traffic. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to stop. It would be nice to use your front brakes. Yeah, it's an enjoyable bike. It makes a good sound. It looks cool. It rides nice. I mean, what's not to like? The controls feel pretty good. I think uh, Bonelli's done a pretty good thing here. Um, I, I definitely had very, very low expectations for this thing. I kind of believed that it would be a uh, basically just a really crappy Chinese motorcycle. But once I wrote it and learned more about it, I was like, oh wait, this is actually like pretty sweet and can can really come together if, uh, you know, if everything aligns. And it actually does. It's actually a really nice thing to ride. But yeah, overall, I think I'd rate the Pinelli a seven and a half out of 10. This is a pretty decent little ride. This is not a bad motorcycle. Um, of other bikes in the category, I mean, that can kind of do what this thing does. Maybe the CB500X from Honda. It's kind of similar-ish. Not exactly the same thing, uh, but I guarantee you that Honda is like 8,500 bucks or whatever, because um, every damn Honda is so expensive. Uh, this is definitely cheaper than the Honda. Um, you know, a lot of people buy their motorcycles based on displacement, which I think is a very silly thing to do. There's definitely much more interesting ways to spend your Saturdays than looking at the displacement of different motorcycles and choosing one based off of that. You gotta ride these bikes, man, because a lot of people are out there buying CBR 500Rs when they should be buying Ninja 400s, and it's a damn shame, and you hate to see it, but it's just the way that it works, you know? So I honestly think Benelli, if they can market these things correctly, 
will actually sell quite a few of them because the price point's great and the feature set is pretty good too. Um, but I like it. It's a, it's a good bike. So guys, that's going to wrap up my thoughts on the Benelli Leoncino 500 Trail. What do you guys think? Let me know down below and we will catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Amy Noob!